next series of videos, we're going to be using Chrome, Google Chrome. Now, the reason I'm using Google Chrome, because I need to create a full page screenshot in Google Chrome extension will enable you to do that. Now, if you don't have Chrome, I highly suggest as a web developer standpoint that you get it. There's a lot of good development tools. It's fast. It's actually turning out to be my favorite browser. I use all the browsers, but Chrome is a good thing to have. So if you don't have Chrome, go get Chrome and then do a Google search for Chrome extensions. In Chrome extensions, we're going to click the Chrome extension link and it's going to bring up this interface here. We're going to type the word screen capture. Now, the one that I like to use a lot is the screen capture by Google. Now, I already added it. If you don't have to edit, you simply hit add here and it puts it inside the top right hand button here. So here's our objective here. So once you've downloaded it and installed Chrome, if you don't have it, then do a web search Chrome extensions. This brings up the Chrome web store, type in screen capture. I want you to install this extension right here into your Chrome browser. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a screen capture of this website. Now, we're just going to screen capture the width and the height, all the different sections of this page. So inside of Chrome, we could simply come up here to the top right. And we're going to screen capture the whole page. Now, once you have the whole page, captured we're going to save that save it in a directory inside of your folder inside your root directory for whatever website you're working on and save that save it as something like guggenheim version on png png is portable network graphic so as a preamble for the class that we're going to develop the video series that i'm developing now a couple of catches here guys i want some likes from a new Facebook page. My new Facebook page is simply facebook.com forward slash forward slash think learn earn. A link to that in this video. So we're going to build this page as a trace image. So we're going to set up our different sections. As an example, this is going to be the age group tag. This is going to be this whole section is going to be the header tag. We're doing HTML development. This will be the nav tag. This will be a section. 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 This will be a footer. This will be an article. Okay, so we're gonna build this page totally from scratch, including the drop down menus here in our next series of videos that I'll be producing, but I need you guys to help me to help you. I need some encouragement with my Facebook page. So the more likes I get, the more I'm going to be prompted to finish this video series on how to build this website from scratch using a trace image. So once you have this page saved, we're going to bring it into our Dreamweaver document as a trace image. Okay, I'll give you a teaser for the video we'll develop and post if in fact you follow me on Facebook or like me on Facebook. Okay, facebook.com forward slash think, learn, earn. Okay, so let's get started here. So we're gonna make a new file. Now we're gonna be making a new HTML5 file. If you don't have HTML5, then select HTML5 from here. Okay, next we're gonna save the file. Okay, so now that we have the page saved here, of course, we want to title the page inside the web browser. Let's just call this Guggenheim, and let's just call this comp version one. So when we publish it to the server for the client, they can see the title of the page is Guggenheim comp version one. Name of the file is index page. Don't confuse the name of the file with the title of the page. The title of the page ends up in search engines. So next thing we need to do is go to a trace image, command key J, command J, insert trace image. So command J for Macintosh, control J for Windows. Brings up this dialog box. Based on these choices, we're going to go to tracing image. We're going to navigate our way to the tracing image and we're going to bring in the screenshot that we just created. And we're going to hit OK. Now, this brings in the trace image, the full size of the original screen capture we did with the Google plugin inside of Chrome. Now, important step here, 
Notice that the trace image, the page itself has some kind of padding up here. I don't want to have padding. So the first tag we're going to put here is the asterisk tag. So property power for the CSS styles, we're going to click here. We're going to go down to compound. We're going to put in the asterisk tag. We're going to set the default value for the padding and the margin for this site here. We're going to set this to zero. So that's going to take the trace image and jab it up in the top left hand corner of the page. Okay. Now we're going to use a site to build from. We're going to not make this exact because that's not what this class is about. This course is how to basically benefit and use any site that you can screen capture. You can build the CSS over on top of it using my simple time tested techniques. Simple, simple, simple. So the first thing we're going to do here, now I can't see the entire page here. So command minus Macintosh, control minus Windows, I could zoom out, I could zoom in, I could zoom out, I could zoom in. So I just want to see the entire page. Now the rulers have to be up here. Command option R brings up rulers, control option R for Windows. Once the rules are up here, I can take my guides. I'm going to put a guide right here. Now, I'm going to make this close to the original. It doesn't have to be exact. This is just understanding what I'm doing. So let's just make this 970, 970, right? 971, we'll live with that. I'm going to take my guide, and I'm going to put a guide down here at, say, 1186. Make a change. Save a change. Now, what did that guide do for me? Very important step on Macintosh. If I hold down the command key, I can see the dimensions of my guide. I can see that this is not in 71 by 1186. That's how big my wrapper tag is going to be. My wrapper tag is going to be those dimensions 971 by 1186. So I come up here to insert div tag called wrapper. Okay, and what size do I make the wrapper? Wrapper is going to be 971 by 1186. So I select the tag and I make a rule for wrapper. The box is going to be 971 by 1186. Now important step here. We're not going to put this in the center of our document right now. Trace image, you can do that, but then I want to calculate from zero here. If you put the trace image in the center, then that doesn't become zero. Now I can move zero, but that's going to be too confusing right now. I just want to keep this very simple and very fundamental. So wrapper tag. Now I don't want to have the wrapper content. So here's what we're going to do here. I don't want this to say wrapper goes here. I'm going to change that to the first tag we're going to put on the page. This is going to be the header tag. So we're going to type in the word header. Header as an HTML tag header, not div tag called header. Header as an HTML5 called header. Okay. So at this point, if you want to, you can identify the different tags. So as an example, this section up here is going to be the nav section. This here is going to be the H group. This is going to be nav. This could be section, followed by section, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is where we're going to use this comp to build our pixel perfect to the last pixel perfect website using my proven technique of tracing image plus HTML5. So guys, the data of slicing and dicing in Photoshop, that's old hat. There's still people that do that. They drive themselves insane. There's no slicing or dicing here. I'm going to build the page on the comp. Now this comp could have been created in Photoshop. The comp could have created been created in Fireworks, which I highly suggest. It could have created in Illustrator. But once the comp is created, I just want to share with you that there's plenty of great designs out there. You can just make a screen capture of that design and build your CSS right over on top of it. Okay, so we're going to turn this into the header tag. Double click, copy, command T, command T, paste, control T for Windows, command T for quick tag 
editor. Hit the return key once, twice. This is now the header tag. So select the header tag down here. Select the tag. Select the tag. Come over here to the right. Make a rule. Make a rule for the selected tag. Now, in this particular case, I don't have to say wrapper header. It's going to say header. Okay. Now, if you want to have multiple headers, then you could use wrapper header. So let's just go with wrapper header. Now, wrapper header is going to be X amount high. Now, we jumped ahead of ourselves. I just want to share with you a very powerful technique. If I take my guide right now and I put a guide right there, then what's the difference? What's the distance between these two points? Well, because I have guides here, I can hold down the command key and I can see that's 104 pixels. So that's how high I'm going to make my header tag. Select the tag, select the tag, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. So header is going to be 104 pixels high. So the height is going to be 104. Plus, plus padding here. So we have roughly, if you look over here, this is about 30 pixels of padding. So we're going to put in 30 pixels of padding, which means we need to minus that from height. So we need to minus 60 pixels of padding. Now, important step here, the header tag, the section tag, Fab tag, those tags in HTML5 have to be set to block level items. So under block, I need to display this as a block. Now, my full complete video, this is just a teaser for what I'm about to share with you. We're going to set the all those tags to block. We're going to do something like header, comma, nav, comma, age group, comma, aside, comma. We're going to set the, all the blocks. In this particular case, I'm going to set the header to block. So there's the header tag. So as an example, if you go up here to view, view when you put your CSS layouts here, you will see that that's my header tag. Now, this is a very powerful production technique because we can see our different divisions for the site. In this particular case, this is the header tag. The green part is the wrapper tag. Now, a shortcut for this, I can turn this on or off by hitting Command Shift I. I use this quite a bit. So Control Shift I for Windows to so watch Command Shift I off Command Shift I on. Every time I do this, it's going to get a different color. This is just to visually see the different divisions, the different tags that I have. Command Shift I turns on and off. So if you want to see this without the trace image, you can just go to live view. Live view is going to show you the page out the trace image. So we're going to do the same thing throughout the entire course here to build this site from scratch. So we're going to take a guide and put a guide here and hold down the command key. That's how big I make my map. Then we're going to hold that in the do a guide from here to here. And this is how big we're going to make 251 is make this section here, which is jQuery. So we're going to build this jQuery application in here from scratch using Adobe Edge, the new version of Adobe Edge 5.0. So that's enough for today. Follow me on Facebook. Is so the more likes I see, the more I'm going to be motivated to publish this video series. The video series is done, but I need some motivation to publish it. It was done weeks ago. So... Thanks for supporting me. Go to facebook.com forward slash think, learn, earn. Talk to you soon.